Warning, this podcast contains explicit sexual language and should only be listened to at work if you're looking for an excuse to connect with your HR representative. Additionally, all mentions of the word women include cis, trans, NB, gender queer, gender fluid, and those still figuring it out. Yes, you. You are welcome here. Will you open up with me? These pages they can feed your innermost desires. Do you feel inspired? Are you getting what you need? Are you coming curiously? A secret safe with me. Here you can simply be yourself. Jay Sweet Romance. Come on in, come on in, come on. Hi, y'all. This is Jace, and you found Jace Reads Romance, a community dedicated to empowering women about sex and sexuality through the reading of romance novels. Well, we knew at the end of our first book definitions episode that we were going to have to make a second. And here we are, almost <laughs> immediately after it was posted. I reached out to Sefi and said, did we really forget this term and that term? And that, I can't believe it. <laughs> so, Gear is currently, I'm going to say, currently going to be part two. I have no doubt that we will end up making more of these as we continue and as the romance world continues to think up absolute bangers of an acronym. And oh, I have my, man. oh, I have my favorite. My favorite is saved for the end. <laughs> and I am sure those of you who know me well can just, you already know what I'm going to say. You, <laughs> you already know it. So don't even worry about it. I have split this not as well as I did our first episode <laughs> into book terms, genre terms, and story terms. So I think part of the reason why is I was very generic and very broad in that first definitions episode when I wrote it. Mm -hmm. And now that we've dipped our toe into the world of book definitions, maybe you were just an avid reader and you never really connected with book talk or the online community of romance readers, and that is fine. So some of these terms might have been new for you. But now that we've all all opened ourselves up to them. I want to make sure that we get to the ones that you're most likely going to hear me say at certain points in my discussions with readers, with authors, with publishers, and the like. So book terms, the first one is, I think, really important, and it is DNF, which stands for did not finish. And if no one has ever given you permission to, I'm giving you permission to put down a book that you don't enjoy. Life is too short to read books that don't speak to you. So if you have been recommended a book and you're 10 pages in, 100 pages, uh, halfway through the book, and you cannot stand it, it does not spark joy as you would, put the book down find something else, go back to a comfort read, cleanse the palate, whatever you need to do, you can absolutely DNF that book. And I will note number one, always, you can DNF a book. And you can also DNF a series. So if you read the mm -hmm. first book in a series, and you went, that was fine. I have zero interest in the rest of it. You can DNF that series, you can get most of the way through a series and go, yeah, this one off the rails. I'm going to DNF the rest of this. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No problem. I'm this pretty sure I just talked to you about a book that I did that with not too long ago, actually. I, pro, which one was that? Well, you oh, talk it was about the a lot one. Of books. It's true. <laughs> oh, yes. You know, okay, I do remember it, that. It like jumped the shark like a third of the <laughs> way through and I was like, nah. <laughs> And y'all, if you've never heard of the term jump the shark, go search engine that. That is a Happy Days reference. 
Mm-hmm. You will thank me for the clip that will appear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the next term is CR, which stands for current read. And you'll hear this, especially in the social media world of, oh, my CR is this, or my CR is that, or my digital CR, my audiobook CR, my physical CR. It just stands for what you're currently reading and engaging in. And if I didn't make this clear before, audiobooks count as reading. They count as reading here at Chase Reads Romance. Absolutely. Absolutely. A thousand percent. Like my personal feelings and my inability to separate my love or, oh God, just listening to an audiobook right now. And every single time the chapter is not Shane East, I, I want to turn it off. I just want to skip to the next chapter. I don't care. I don't care that I'm going to miss the plot. All I want to do is listen to him speak. Um <laughs> I will gladly blush for that man. Okay. I mean, it's not hard. So no, <laughs> no not at all. So a n- a next term is RTC, which is review to come. And I like this. This is I should probably use this more because I don't I need a little bit of space to go into one of my like blog posts, my in-depth reviews where I really sit down and how do I feel about this book and how do I feel it talked about sex and how do I feel like it amplified or maybe didn't amplify certain voices or certain preferences. I, I need that space. So RTC, you might have someone post on social media or on book talk or even on a blog that says, I just finished this book, review to come, which means they're just telling you they finished it, but they're not going to give you their thoughts just yet. They might even use it as a teaser for something that's coming down the line, especially if they are doing a paid partnership, something where they're intended to promote a book. They might say, oh my gosh, I'm reading this. Oh my gosh, I finished it. RTC, review to come, blah, 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 to get you hyped for whatever book that is. Moving into TW, sometimes called CW, this stands for trigger warnings slash content warnings. And this is a very important one to know, especially with how morally gray, dark romance and also just cognizant writers are being of potential triggers for their readers. Even someone, not even someone, but Authors who maybe play with kink. There's nothing morally gray. There's nothing dark. Kink doesn't equal dark. Let's let's also just make sure we know that. Just yes. because something is kink does not make it dark. Just because something is dark does not mean it has kink involved. Usually it doesn't have kink, if you ask people who are kinky. But <laughs> <laughs> it is important to know if you are triggered by by anything. And it could be something that has to do with the sex, like... Uh, bondage or impact play. It could have something to do with emotional trauma, uh, the death of a parent, the loss of a spouse, or mental health uh, situations that a character either engages in or has a history of. It might happen off page. It might happen in the past. And authors Mm -hmm. will go into some really great detail and sometimes not enough detail in my, in my opinion. But If you're someone who typically skips to chapter one, I highly recommend, especially if you read ebooks where it just opens to the first page, go back Mm -hmm. and make sure you didn't miss a trigger warning or a content warning. The most annoying thing I'm seeing, and Steffi, I don't know if you feel the same way, is when an author says, here's a brief overview for the full list, click this QR code that will take you to my website. No, I want the list right there. I want it right yeah. there because sometimes I'm a little bit impatient and I don't <laughs> feel like getting my phone out to QR or a click or mm-hmm. whatever. And yeah. I really, and I really should have. I really should have. Yeah, no, I agree with you. It, it, it's, it, it's an author being, um, Oh, what is the word? I, think I can't even think of it. Transparent, transparent, but transparent also or supportive. like supportive to their readers. Like it's yeah. it's an author being very um, obvious, and um, I think you use the word cognizant, and that's the only word that's coming to my brain right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it and 
an author needs to be completely opaque with yeah. what they're about to present to their readers and they need to do it very openly. So yeah. the fact that they only would post like a partial list is not keeping your readers safe, you know? This is also, so, it harkens back to our conversation we had with Princess Rara about mm -hmm. how an author, I think, has a, a duty to tell their readers how they intend for their content to be received. Now, you yes. can't control it, but if they say, hey, this is for your spank bank, this is so you can role play, this is absolutely not how you handle these situations in person. They yeah. really do, especially when you get to some more extreme, whether it's extreme kink or extreme dark or morally gray or whatever, once mm -hmm. you get outside of the realm of what's considered. No, I'm not even gonna say that you should always you should always have something. Always, I know there's that always have like, something always have something. Um, yeah. Because just because yeah. what like a specific reader might not be triggered by anything on the list there is going to be a reader somewhere out there that is yeah like so you you always need to keep that in mind you're, you're not you're not writing for yourself I mean partially you are <laughs> but you're also writing in the hopes that other people are going to read and enjoy this content as well and you want to make sure they do it in a safe manner that keeps mm -hmm. their keeps your readers yeah you know Safe. It's what, I mean, I'm really that's the best word I can use. Yeah. I'm appreciating that there's a lot more mental health triggers that I'm seeing. Yes. And it's not just uh, spice or smut or sex. It is. Yes. There's a lot of stuff that could trigger an emotional reaction of mm -hmm. an extreme emotional reaction being mentioned on trigger warnings. And I think that that's very helpful for for a reader yeah. who might not be in a place to to put that. And that's a moment when you might have picked up the book, read the trigger warning and DNF that exactly Call back. exactly <laughs> um, next thing on the list and this is they're two very similar things so I'm putting them almost together but they are usually handled differently it is a blurb and a synopsis and a blurb is usually just a few sentences it might be on the back of a book jacket it might be the thing posted on Amazon and a big synopsis might be a little bit longer so usually there you might hear them kind of interchanged especially if a book has a synopsis but not a blurb or a blurb mm -hmm. and then everything else is just quotes praising the author on a book but Usually they're handled in terms of the the detail of plot. A synopsis is usually more detailed on what's mm -hmm. going to happen in the book. And a blurb's that that teaser, that little amuse bouche that gets you ready to read yeah. the book. Yeah. I remember when like they first stopped putting like a synopsis on the back of a book cover. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait, what just happened? What, where does it go? How am I and supposed you, to know course, what this is? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, with hardcovers, a lot of the time it'll be inside on the inside, uh -huh. like little book jacket. But otherwise, if it's like a paperback or something, you're kind of SOL. <laughs> I think they just assume that's what the internet is for. If you really want to know, you'll look it up on your phone. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of, a lot of these terms are slash this term. So there are two terms and they almost go together. I know. One is H-E-A and H-F-N. So H-E-A stands for happily ever after. And certain people in the romance world have a very clear definition of what that means. And it usually means an epilogue where they're married and pregnant. For oh, some goodness. people. For some people. and. That is, that's totally fine if that is your jam and that is the thing that you mm -hmm. want. Um, but more broadly, happily ever after just means they are together in, ooh, <laughs> knocking things over. They are together <laughs> in what seems to be a permanent fashion. Whereas mm -hmm. HFN, happy for now, is mm -hmm. it... <laughs> for people it's very open-ended not even open-ended i think some people literally right oh <laughs> sorry 
<laughs> Siri decided to make an appearance. <laughs> I like your Siri voice. Um, Thank you. <laughs> uh, but I think even some people consider HFN if it's just, and they got together. But they're not engaged. Mm. There's no epilogue. There's no engagement. Yeah. There's no marriage. There's no pregnant. They're just together. Yeah. And yeah. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't have a personal opinion either way. I want them to be together. Right. Usually, you want them to be together. I just want them yeah. to be together. I consider together, unless it's a series and there's like danger ahead. <laughs> danger, Will Robinson. Mm-hmm. I consider that a happily ever after. But um, yeah, for some, it does need to have marriage and kids. It's fine. That's what icebreaker. Yeah. Icebreaker is basically that they're <laughs> they're engaged. <laughs> in, spoiler alert: <laughs> they're engaged and pregnant at the end of Icebreaker, uh, which okay. I was shocked by. I was like that. I did not see that one coming. Um, really? I no. She specifically says in the book, I don't want to have my own kids. I want to adopt because I was adopted. And then oh, she has like a okay. birth control malfunction and she's six months pregnant. Yeah, I no. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't quite compute there. I, that was not my favorite ending. I didn't love <laughs> that, but that's that's a horse of a different color. <laughs> Go watch Wizard of Oz if you haven't seen that. Um, <laughs> POV, <laughs> POV is next, and POV stands for point of view. This is where you're going to harken back to English class. Um, only if only if that serves you. Maybe maybe English class is really really triggering for you, and then don't think about English <laughs> class. But point don't. of view is who is telling this story and you'll usually get either first person which means someone is telling their own story i felt i saw i ran up the hill down the hill away from the bad guys towards my love interest and you can have things like dual point of view where you get chapters from each person's perspective what mm-hmm. i really i usually it's a chapter thank god cuz when they try and make it like every other sentence it drives me up the wall and oh, <laughs> oh that just wall. sounds like it would hurt my brain it, it's not fun and then <sighs> the other one that you usually hear is third person usually omniscient third person is she did he did they did often it's from a person's perspective in the romance world So Mm -hmm. it will be Evangeline ran down the hill and she saw Jax and he was hot. Bonus points if you know what series I'm talking about, as opposed to um, some third, some third persons are just she, he, they all over the place. I kind of prefer when it's from a specific point of view written in the third person it makes my brain yeah. hurt less but if yeah. you hear someone say pov or it's from for thinking back to butcher and blackbird one of my obsessions it's <laughs> the chapters are written either from rowan's pov point of view or sloan's pov point of view rowan okay. tells the story or sloan tells the story um yeah as opposed to A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber, or each, and they're usually uh, in in Butcher and Blackbird, they're first person. In A Curse for True Love, they are third person. It's Apollo ran down the hill, or Evangeline thwarted the evil plot. So that's the first person. I don't think I've ever read something in second person, nor do I want to, because the idea makes my brain hurt, because that would be you! There's a lot of fan fiction that's written that way, um, especially if it's like a reader insert uh, fan fiction. It'll be it'll use the second person uh, POV. It's it it makes your brain hurt a little bit. <laughs> I mean nothing like fanfics. Absolutely, write your hearts out, y'all. Absolutely, write your hearts out. <laughs> I will not be reading any second second person fanfic. There are a couple good ones that I've stumbled upon, but for the most part, I want, I want they're not. Know. I'm okay. 
Amazing. I'm okay for right now. <laughs> Convince me. Um, <laughs> this is a term that I don't talk about a ton, but YA specifically, young adults usually means mm -hmm. geared toward a teenager. 13 to 18 is around when the age of the protagonists are or you might get up to 19. Um, and usually they're closed or no smut whatsoever. But if you are looking at romance, you will find YA. If you're looking for fantasy, you'll find YA. And people, I read mm -hmm. both. I read both adult and I read both YA. And I think it really depends on how good the storytelling is. Um, there are other, like NA is a new adult and it's, up to, I think it's 18 to 23 and then there's another one that's for even like tweens, like eight to 12, um, which I don't read usually. So I don't, <laughs> I'm not going to be reading a romance novel for an eight year old. So I'm not dealing with no. that one. No. <laughs> but speaking of love, uh, LI is the next one. This is love interest. And I love it because it's gender neutral. Who's your LI? The LI yes. is is blank gender neutral term not to be confused mm -hmm. with actually mc is another one main character you could say the mcs are rowan and sloan or whoever there are gender terms fmc mmc if you're in those kinds of if you're reading those heterosexual books where there's male female or even mm -hmm. you know why choose reverse harem polyamory kind of things fmcs yeah. mmcs things of that nature so those are terms that you're going to hear quite a bit. And this is the last book term that I've got in terms of book in general. And these are PB and HC. PB, paperback. HC, hardcover. And you'll usually only hear these terms when someone's talking about arcs. If you remember from the last book definitions episode, and if you mm -hmm. don't, go listen to it. Or special special editions, things, yeah. books that are fancy. But you might have someone who, you might follow someone or stumble across someone who's really into, I think the book that's popping up everywhere for me is Gothicana. And it's got beautiful sprayed edges and art and stuff. And it's a special hardcover mm -hmm book i think it's a first print but you know fourth winged and so well with yeah. that so everyone's doing it yeah so those are yeah. book terms that i have on my list and i'm gonna move right into two genre terms we if you go back to that first this is part two y'all part two i'm building on part one so genre <laughs> <laughs> genres are different for me than tropes so these are genre terms and there are a few that are acronymed and i've heard them enough that i wanted to clarify the acronyms for the specific genres so sff kind of lumps sci-fi and fantasy together i have different mm -hmm. opinions about sci-fi and fantasy i think they're two things <laughs> but for those that don't sff is a term that you're going to hear that encompasses both sci-fi and fantasy. There you go. Not to be confused with PNR, which is paranormal romance, which is my personal favorite. <laughs> it's my personal favorite paranormal romance, uh, PNR. So those are two acronyms for things that we went over in the first episode. So. I'm not going to bother. I'm going to send you back to the beginning of January. <laughs> the final category, and this is really a smorgasbord of lots of things that I'm calling story terms. They're not necessarily, some of them might be tropes. Some of them might be descriptors of stories or, you know, kind of categories under stories, but they're terms that affect or relate to the story itself that mm -hmm. i i want to i have a clear vision in my mind um and some that don't and they just don't fit anywhere else so i'm going to talk about them the first one is <laughs> the first one is a meat cute and this is a term often used in film really it's really heavily used in film but it also is used in the storytelling of books and a meat cute is meat 
And a meet cute is just how the love interests meet, literally. Were their mm-hmm. hands reaching for the same avocado in Whole Foods? <laughs> Did she unknowingly sleep with her boss last night and suddenly, like, you don't know. So a meet cute is just how they connect. Um, if it's the perfect fit, she runs into someone with a bike. That's a good one. Oh, I love that book. Okay. <laughs> this is, and I told you. Or, or if it's my fan fiction, you meet at a, like a, <laughs> a meet and greet for uh, the movie premiere. Yes. He looks up after signing whatever you're signing. Yeah, it's, yeah pretty much. <laughs> and cannot, and cannot resist you. Yeah. Um, that's beautiful. That's great. I hope that that happens in real life for someone real bad it probably has it probably has why not uh Mm -hmm. okay so the next one is a term these are just story terms again there's no rhyme or reason it's like very upsetting to me that there isn't a better categorization for this but we're just gonna roll with it so the next term that i have on my list is called sapphic and sapphic Mm -hmm. is a term that you might not be familiar with i know we talked about it with anita back in our ace our ace conversation but sapphic is used to describe ff romances female female sometimes called lesbian whatever uh it is a Mm -hmm. term from a story of your sapphos and Mm -hmm. it's used to describe that kind of ff relationship so that's a term i'm seeing a lot more than ff Nowadays, I'm seeing sapphic romance, and I think that's great. I love it. The next yeah. one I want to put on here because I, I also want to clarify like what we what we talk about. And just if you've never heard this term before, BIPOC, B I P O C, mm-hmm. Black Indigenous Person of Color. It is yeah. a it is a big umbrella term, but it's also really important to acknowledge uh, who you're reading and what you're reading. And there's a little bit of a debate right now. And here's the way that I'm going to, here's the way that I'm going to share this. Because I think both, both of these avenues are important. When you're thinking about reading diversely, the diversity comes in the author. I think you want to support BIPOC authors. That is the definition of reading diversely or diversifying your bookshelf. Also, Oh my gosh, I keep hitting things. <laughs> you keep hitting things. My Siri just appears out of nowhere. Your cat so. is making noise. It's amazing. <laughs> I know, it's great. <laughs> also, I want to celebrate authors having diversity within their own books. So an author having a diverse cast of characters not just one race, not just one religion, not just one anything, but having diversity within their story. Katie Robert does a great job of having diverse characters in her stories. She is white. So I wouldn't consider Katie Robert on my bookshelf as diversifying my bookshelf. Do I want to applaud authors that do that and make an effort to create diversity within their stories and the humanity that they're reading? And they're writing about? Absolutely. But when we're specifically talking about diversifying our bookshelves, it's having authors who are not white, not Christian, not the same as you. If you are a person Mm -hmm. of color, diversifying your bookshelf means having varied humanity. If you are Latinx, having Black authors, having AAPI authors, having white authors, same for me. It's having the diversity of humanity on my bookshelf and celebrating Mm -hmm. diversity within the stories that authors are telling. So I wanted to just put that out there. Next term is smut slash spice. And I am assuming if you are here, you have an understanding of smut slash spice, but I'm just going to lay it out for you. Smut slash spice means sex, means sex organs get stimulated in some way, shape or form by 
sometimes yourself, and a partner. <laughs> so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say, oh, well, this counts as sex or this. I'm not judging whatever. It means a sex organ, a primary and hopefully some secondary sex organs get stimulated <laughs> by you and and someone else. This for me, smut does not fade to black. It is explicit. It is fun. It is fun. But if you're looking for yes. stuff that says smut or spice, if something something says someone says spicy, it usually means there is explicit sex in that. Mm -hmm. As opposed to the next term, fade to black, which essentially means a PG-13 movie. It's maybe mm -hmm. implied that they had sex, but it is not stated. So Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood is a fade to black situation it's not explicit all right moving into some more story terms otp is one true pairing and i believe this is more of a fanfic originated term but it's yeah. moved into the romance world as well and so mm -hmm. i'm really gonna Sefi, you are so deep into that fanfic world please share <laughs> the fanfic originated view of otp one true pairing um yeah one true pairing definitely is very much from the fan fiction world it stems from um the fact that you can be writing a character and there are multiple people that are paired with him or her or them in the fan fiction world i'm going to use um loki as uh as an example because that's what i wrote but um for in my loki fan fiction my slight writer insert slash original character was uh segan who is a goddess in norse mythology and in norse mythology she is the wife of loki <laughs> <laughs> um she's also the wife of loki in the marvel comics like that that that's canon so if if you're a fan of that pairing, that would be your one true pairing. Mm -hmm. There was also a lot, especially after the movies came out, especially after the first Thor movie came out, there was a lot of a lot of people who became fans of the pairing of Loki with Jane's assistant, Darcy. Oh my God, that's um, so great. Right? I agree with that. Like that was definitely high up on my list as a pairing. And that was that that was one true that was a one true pairing for a lot of people. But it's kind of that idea that like this is the couple you want to see together yeah. in the end. Okay. That's your favorite. Whew. All right. Thank you. Uh, ooh. Mm -hmm. Next is TSTL, which stands for too stupid to live. Not a nice thing to say, but <laughs> it is a, an acronym used when someone feels this a character is just that dumb and frustrating. And we've all had those characters that just made us want to not necessarily throw the book against the wall. We respect books, but throw them against the wall, like bring them into being and throw them against the wall. So if you ever hear someone say, oh my gosh, that MMC or that F, mc or that li was tstl too stupid to live and they found them incredibly frustrating they made decisions the the person describing them considered absolutely idiotic <laughs> i have one in my head right really? now so i'm thinking oh. of, yeah so it's not a main character it's a side character yeah but he's pretty important to the story Is it the one that i'm thinking about I don't know, because I'm still listening to Iron yeah, Flame. So. It's probably exactly what I'm thinking about. Lovingly, the next one is Cinnamon Roll. And I've also heard this as a Golden Retriever. So Cinnamon Roll slash Golden Retriever mm -hmm. is usually describing a male main character who is just the sweetest human ever. So sometimes they're just... <laughs> 
soft and gooey like a cinnamon roll or they've got big puppy dog eyes and they just want to love all over you um <sighs> and i i do like that usually it's a he in in this case it's often that character falls first and is pursuing their love mm-hmm. interest throughout the book come hell or high water but it is a nice juxtaposition to the alpha male or alpha hole which i guess is a term that i have to describe now um alpha or Ooh. alpha hole <laughs> is toxic masculinity all rolled up into usually a frustratingly attractive human mm-hmm. that's enough i don't i don't need to go yeah. deeper into that nope a term that you're going to hear and i didn't put this in with the trigger warning be is just because this is such a specific thing in this is a dark romance phrase usually you might find it in the Morley Gray, and it's dub con slash non con. And I want to be very clear this is not something that you find in kink. This is specific to storytelling and the romance genre and dark romance. This is not kink. If you want to know more about that, go listen to my episodes with Princess Rara. Yes. So DubCon stands for like dubious consent and non-con stands for non-consent. And I put them together because they often are listed together. But dubious consent is Mm -hmm. that she didn't say no, but she also really didn't say yes. And I'm saying she, it's usually she, however... Obviously, these things can go in multiple ways Mm -hmm. and you can have multiple parties that are all part of this kind of situation. So it's not just she. One person is not saying yes, as opposed to non-con, where they are very, very specifically saying no. So dubious consent, they're not saying yes. Non-con, they're actively saying no. Take that as you will. If yeah. that's something where you just listening to that one, oh my gosh, please start to read your trigger warnings, especially if you're yeah. dipping your toe into morally gray or dark romance. That is something that comes up quite frequently. So next is the who did this to you trope, mm-hmm. which is... I I think very broad. I think very broad. Yeah. But seems to be when a love interest has some sort of event, it could be that they had a nightmare of a traumatic event and then are requested to unburden themselves and reveal what happened to them, Mm -hmm. that they are physically hurt or emotionally hurt and Mm -hmm. the other person finds them in this state and demands answers Mm -hmm. and this seems to go more with that morally gray no no i'm not even gonna say morally gray because there are some oh he's she's crying i must avenge her and it's not morally gray at all it's just that's fair that's fair it's fair (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but usually usually apparently it involves the phrase who did this to you <laughs> so <laughs> hence the you're gonna read it without hearing it like that now thanks <laughs> i'm so sorry i'm not sorry <laughs> but i'm gonna ruin another one for you there's another <laughs> there's another trope that you, I'm sure you've, you're about to guess this. It's the my wife trope, mm-hmm. um, which usually is, I find most, okay, here's the way that I'm going to say this. I find this most effective when it's a marriage of convenience and they don't want to admit their feelings for each other. And then suddenly yes. they get jealous. My, yes. Um, I find that really effective. Gosh, mm-hmm. darn it. I just need to put my water further away so i stop hitting the straw with my wild gesticulations um (laughs) yeah but so the my wife trope is 
is plays into that also sometimes mm-hmm. called touch her and die mm-hmm. sometimes yeah. literally if you're in yeah. the uh, dark romance world yes. yeah. and sometimes just really growly if you're on the other side of that so mm-hmm. those those three kind of playing together who did this to yeah. you my yeah. wife and touch her and die I see it a lot with like uh like faded mates or oh. that, that type of of mm-hmm. romance stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's also the TikTok sound that's really popular right now. That's the it's the quote from uh Modern Family actually. And he it's it's Phil from Modern Family. He says, and "If you say something bad about my wife, I'll kill you." <laughs> that sounds like I'm joking, but I mean it. I'll kill you. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are there are a lot of there are a lot of when audiobooks come out, there's some great, great lines yep. that yep. that come out. Okay. So the last acronym that I'm gonna share, and then I'm gonna give you a bonus one that someone shared with me. And <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all, it's so great. But it's S T F U A T T D L A G G. I know what that means. <laughs> I actually, I really need a sweatshirt with it, but the only ones I find are black. And I don't know if y'all have noticed, but black's not in my color scheme. So if you find <laughs> one that is not just black, send it along. And what that acronym means is shut the fuck up and take that dick like a good girl. Mm hmm. I love it. I've also say, I've also heard gonna, other ones. Yeah. Oh, there are so many. Like so many. there are some that pop up on my TikTok for you page. I'm like, I don't know what that means. But I'm gonna I'm just gonna say and Yeah. I'm sorry, Michael. Um, but it's really fun when you hear that in person. <laughs> <gasps> oh, that's so great. <laughs> I mean, it's so wonderful. Like, what's what mm-hmm. could be better? So this is not an acronym that lives in the romance world, but I feel like it needs to be adopted just for life, for politeness. And it's D-Y-W-M-T-C-O-A-E-Y-P-T-Y-C-O-M-F. And I feel like this is a... A more honest question and oh, would get yeah. a better response. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is a replacement for the ever dreaded WYD, or if you're a little bit older, you up? <laughs> you up? Oh, you God. up? <laughs> <laughs> and that acronym means Do you want me to come over and eat your pussy till you come on my face? And I feel like. <laughs> If that had been the actual question and then followed up with that action, I might have responded with yes, more than, oh, no, I'm so sorry. I was totally asleep the next day. Um, (laughs) Yes. But it was 4.30 in the afternoon. Yeah, I just had a really busy day. Um. (laughs) And so when we're talking about absolutely crazy acronyms, did I give the other one? So S-T-F-U-A-S-M-C-L-A-G-G? Yeah. Oh, I did. No. No, I didn't? Oh, well, let's go back to that one. So another one I've seen I like is the S-T-F-U-A, shut the fuck up, and S-M-C-L-A-G-G, swallow my cock like a good girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, if you have a praise kink... This is this is for you. That's mm-hmm. for you, friends. But it's a very that first one is a very, very big phrase right now in the romance world. And I don't blame anyone. I love it. I love that. So yeah. we did it. Part two. If we've missed something that you feel we must share or you just want to hear me say it out loud, let us know in the (laughs) comments. Shoot us a message on our social. Jace reads romance everywhere like a boss. And 
thank you for for listening to our joy of book terms and book <laughs> definitions. <laughs> We did it! <laughs> That's it for today, y'all. This has been a Three Paws Productions podcast. Our producer is Sefi. Michael Achenbach is our patient editor. Our theme song is written and performed by Diana Weishauer. You can find show notes and so much more at jacereadsromance.com. That's J-A-Y-C-E Reads Romance. Follow along on TikTok and Instagram at Jace Reads Romance. If you'd like to ask a question or share a story for the podcast, call and leave a message at 661 Jace RR. That's 661 529 2377. Or send an email to Jace at jacereadsromance.com. Finally, like and subscribe so you can get every episode when they drop. You can also leave us a review to help others find us. And remember, this is Jace holding space for you.